Welcome back everyone, I'm Zell, and today we're looking at the Microtech Stitch. You guys wanted to see this thing, so we're going to look at it. It comes in a Microtech box, just like the majority of the Microtech, uh, regular Microtech knives and Signature Series knives come in. Uh, you go any further up, they start getting in weird boxes. There we go, it's a Stitch Automatic SE Apocalyptic Standard 169.10 AP, whatever all that means. I'm sure there's somebody out there that knows specifically. Got your welcome to the Microtech family. And uh, made in the USA with the Microtech claw. And here we go. Caution, sharp edge. Inspected by ZL, it looks like. We got a product manual, and we won't get too deep into that. Uh, if you want to read that, either buy a Microtech knife, or I think you can read most of it on their website. And it's all foamy in there, nice and cozy for the knife. And there you go. That is your Borka Blades Stitch. Automatic by Microtech. Got your Borka Blades little emblem right there. And what do you get with this dude? Well, one, it is a big, beefy heck of a knife that is way cooler than what it looks like whenever you see these things open in places. Uh, we have a closed length of five inches, a handle thickness of 0.625, so it's a chubby dude, and it's fairly tall for what it is. We got almost two inches in closed height, an open overall length of eight and a half inches, and a blade length of only about 3.66, and an edge length of 3.1. We'll look at that here in a minute. We do have nearly 5 millimeter stock. It's uh, about 190 stock and a weight of 6.38 ounces, so pretty hefty too. And, well, let's just pop it out here. This ought to be fun. Kill switch right there. Boom. And we have a stitch on the table. So, we'll get our standards out here. We have a buck 110. And I had a rat up here somewhere. The uh, Delica has flown the coop. It's over on the other desk or something. So for today, and I guess I'll get those up in the camera, huh? Hey, there you go. Get that off the bunny rabbit. And there is a Mantra, which is fairly close in size to a Delica. And let's see, is there anything else we should put up against that guy? What do we got here? Here's a 0393. And here is a Manix 2 Lightweight. Now the Manix 2, believe it or not, is probably the closest in proportion. People are probably freaking out. Going, no, the Manix isn't. Yeah, the Manix is very close in proportion to the Borka Blade Stitch. Nearly the same length, see, but definitely weighs a lot less and all, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. So let's get a look at this blade because it is one interesting blade. It is a piece of M390 in this particular stitch. That's not always going to be true. Sometimes it'll be LMAX, sometimes it'll be 3V. Depends on which one you get a chance to pick up. This one was made in the third month of 2017, and it's a stitch automatic with the apocalyptic finish in the black handle. We've got a flat grind here, big flat swedge here, big hole here, all chamfered up. We've got some jumping across here right before you get to the little harpoon, and Microtech style, or actually what I would call a Strider style sharpening choil, and we have some jumping back here. And we only have 3.1 inches of edge. We've got a 3.66 inch blade. So a half inch of the blade is choil and choil. So, hmm. But, well, first off, let's go to mechanics. It is an out the side automatic. I have not had it apart because uh, out the side automatics, if they work, you just leave them together because there's so much ick in there and springs and yeah you know what i mean so it is a hard firing automatic you definitely if you limp wrist this thing it's gonna freaking end up in the floor for sure fires hard 
and solidly and smoothly. There's no roughness as this thing goes open or close. Uh, very nice in that regard for an automatic. A lot of times automatics will have, they rely on the spring. So as long as they're somewhat smooth, the maker's like, well, whatever, nobody's gonna notice that. Not Microtech, they take their time, they get everything right. Uh, on the outside of it, which we kind of missed all that. Let's go back and look a little bit. We've got aluminum handles with this triangle grip pattern. It's actually a very nice grippy pattern, works pretty darn well. A little bit of the triangle grip pattern over here, but we've got the pocket clip there. So Microtech very smartly quit the pattern so you can get the knife in and out on the smooth aluminum. Got a really large uh, pivot area, that 190 blade stock. Got a nice big backspacer in there, little lanyard hole, and we've got big stop pins all around. Everything is just super sized in this guy, and you know, it's pretty cool. See, I even stopped it there on the bunny rabbit, and it still opened. Now, let's talk about ergonomics because that's where this knife is made, makes it or breaks it because of our weird handle to blade ratio. Because that was the thing that came to my mind every time I saw a stitch. Is, man, it doesn't have very much blade for how much handle it has. Then I ended up with one in my hand, and this is what you find out. You guys tell me. Fairly simple, no sharp pointy stuff. And whenever you put this guy in your hand, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, you got a lot of handles sticking out back here, unless you've got like super, super sausage finger hands. But... Uh, for all us people that have somewhat normal hands, uh, it, it fits really good and it feels good to cut with. And, you know, it's one of the things that we talk about this 190 blade stock, but it cuts. You know, and that's Microtech sharp. That's not something I've done to it. It's uh, plenty sharp. Cuts plenty good uh, and cuts actually unbelievably well for a knife that's got 190 blade stock for nearly five millimeters. And I, it, it's, you can do whatever you want with it. Get up there in that big blade hole, nah, everything's good. Now, stick it in the pocket and then we'll talk about what would I do different. Because I always have to do something different, don't I? Because I'm weird like that. that pocket all straightened out there is a little, a little ruffled on us. And, you know, it's got one of those good Microtech clips. A little tight right now because the knife's essentially new, never been used. And that's what you end up with. You got that big old knife in there. And that's all you end up with sticking out. It's a little thick here, a little thick in height, but it carries pretty darn good. I've carried it some, no problems. And usually, and it doesn't even seem to, you know, that looked like it ripped out of there real hard. I don't remember that from carrying it. So, uh, must have carried better than it does here on the desk. So, let's move on to what would Zell do different. You know, on the Borga Blade Stitch, it's kind of an iconic knife. But if I were to go back and redesign something in this manner, uh, I would do a couple of things, and I'm going to say these, and then you're going to go look at some stitches from Borka Blades, and you're going to be like, well, hey, they already done that. Well, that's true, because the things that I would do would be, I would put the uh, stop pins in the blade. If the blade's going to be this tall out of here, put the stop pins in the blade. I would make this hole smaller. That gives me more you know, teardrop shape or something. Give me more room to go up this uh, blade with bevel. And, you know, other than that, the one thing that I would want to do is pull this back. I want to gain back as close to a half inch of blade as I can. Another thing I do upset a lot of people is on this knife, knowing that it is a hard use knife and a knife that is meant for perforating things if necessary, 
this would go away and it wouldn't have nearly as clean and pretty as sweeps here. They would be nearly 90 degrees on those uh, plunge grinds. Why? Because if I have to perforate something, whether it's an Amazon box or something else, I don't want the end of that edge getting stuck on that whatever I need to perforate. So, you know, there are some things that I would change. Now, I'm going to bet that if you go and you look at a actual Borka blade stitch, that uh, the majority of those changes are exactly what Sebastian does on his own Borka blade stitches. So, uh, there you go. He's already thought of those things, except for moving that choil back. And I would, uh, making it a manual knife, getting rid of the automatic, you could move your pivot a little bit and bring that choil back some and uh, bring it back into a place where you where you get more blade to handle. And I know I don't fuss about blade to handle ratio very often, but in this case, we're, we're really lacking blade in a knife that has a handle that's five inches long. So I would be conscious of that. But anyhow, guys, that is the Borka Blade Stitch. If you're looking for an out-the-side automatic, and I've handled more than my fair share of out-the-side automatics, I'm not a big fan of them. In fact, after I get done, uh, get this review wrapped up and get it edited, this thing is on its way to Texas because I just find very little personal use for the out-to-side automatic. If I'm going to have an automatic, I would rather have the OTF because it makes for a smaller package, a, a super small package in the case of the UTX-70. I mean, that thing's tiny. But uh, UTX-85 is something that I do carry because they make a very small compact package, and uh, I don't need my knife to do that. But... If you are into the outside automatic and you're looking for one that's built extremely well and you've moved above Kershaw's launch line, this is one that should be on your list is the Microtech Switch or Stitch. Uh, the other one is the Microtech Dock Kill Switch Edition because they are just great, great knives and it's one of the few knives where the addition of the automatic doesn't take it, in my world, doesn't make it not great. Now, the only thing is, I'm not going to carry this thing around because I don't need to be pulling my EDC knife out and have it be automatic. That's, you know, some of the knives I carry being flippers is enough. You start adding automatics in, some people are going to get a little weird. But if that is your thing, get it on your list and uh, keep watch on them see if you can find you one because they are super super cool for the out the side automatics they're big they're bulky they're hard use but still super cool for the out the side automatic and even though the blade to handle ratio is goofy they make great users this thing cuts so much better than a blade with 190 stock should it just i don't i don't understand they, I mean, they don't even have really tall grinds, but it still cuts extremely well. That means it's ground extremely thin, I assume. It doesn't matter on this, but I can feel it. And, and I can guess that we're probably somewhere around 20 thousandths. So they've done a really, really good job. Anyhow, I'm going to get out of here. This has been the Borka Blades Microtech Stitch. I suppose this would be the Kill, kill Switch Edition or the automatic, however you'd like to say it. And it is a super cool uh, out the side automatic. If I were gonna carry an out the side automatic, uh, yeah, this is high on the list. It'd be right up there with the Protect Striders. And, uh, and there wouldn't really be a whole lot else because this little dude, or big dude, is pretty cool. You guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell because you want to know when we got new stuff going on here and you for sure want, don't want to miss the Apex News every week right here on the Zoark YouTube channel where we gather all the news up into one big ball of wax and put it in a nice, readable, clickable format for you. Check us out just about every week on the Apex News. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you next time.